My name is Cody Carver and we're here on the Canal River and I am the West Virginia state record blue cat holder. My dad used to take us uh, fishing in the creek. We'd catch minnows and he'd take us fishing in the creek, all of us kids, just catching bass or red eyes or whatever. And that's probably the first that I remember. On a day to day, I get up, I go to work, think about fishing all day long or hunting. As soon as I get off, that's what I do. I live to hunt or fish. It's peaceful. I like being out on the river, a lot of times by myself, just it's a good place to think, clear your mind. I've worked uh, right here on the river, actually, in Bell. Uh, it's actually right across the river from here at uh, Boyd Machinery. And a lot of days I'm standing in there looking outside at the river. It's slick, calm, sunshine. I got to leave some days early, you know. It, it's nice being able to watch the water all day. Well, it started just before I got off work, actually. Uh, my friend Aaron Priest called and asked me if I wanted some bait. So I had no bait to fish with. And uh, I looked outside, you know, from work. It was one of those days it was slick, calm, no wind. I said, yeah, I'll take some. And uh, he couldn't fish that evening, but my other friend, Sean, could. So Sean stopped and got the bait and met me at the house. About the time we was hooking the boat up, it was pouring down the rain and wind. And I thought we're wasting our time. You know, rivers up, muddy, stuff floating. This this is gonna be a waste of time. Well, we went ahead and loaded everything up. And we come down here and put in, and the wind actually laid down. It was still mist and rain. And with the current conditions and everything, we decided to go up river and fish on the inside bend with uh, wood, scattered wood. So we marked three spots and uh, we went up to the upper end. I asked him, I said, is this, what do you think about this? He says, it looks good to me, let's fish. So we throw the anchor out, baited the rods, started fishing. We'd probably fish 15 minutes and uh, caught a flathead about 18 pounds. And that was better than we thought we was going to do. And we was probably 35, 40 minutes into the set and almost time to leave. And uh, the rod just slightly bent just a little, almost like a, another flathead bite. And before I got out of the chair, it was down. Uh, it was pulling drag. And I keep the drag pretty tight since 40 pound slime line, I ain't too worried about fish snapping. And I get the rod out of the rod holder and I pull it back and it didn't give. It's still slipping a little bit of drag. And I said, Sean, this fish is still pulling drag. I said, man, that's going to be a good one. So, you know, I started fighting it there and I got it turned around and it swam straight at the boat. And I thought it was a little fish then. It run up to the boat and started diving, you know. Uh, probably fought it for five minutes or so. And it was coming up, and it come up at about the motor. And where the river was up and muddy, I really couldn't see it. But I did see the splash, and Sean said, that's a state record fish. In my mind, I thought, nah, there's no way. It's a good fish, but it's not a steak right now. Turn 
I finally get it pulled up to the top and he gets it in the net and pulls it over to the side of the boat and he couldn't pick it up in the boat. He said, I'm going to need some help. So I, I grabbed the net and we set it in the boat and the fish was just a butterball. At this time, I still didn't think it was a state record, but he said it again. He said, man, you just caught the state record. So I got the hook out of the fish, just kind of looking at it, and we got the scales. And the first scale I put it on said 63 pounds in the net. Well, the net weighed a little over two pounds. And I thought, well, that, that is a state record. Sean said, are you going to call? I said, I don't know, man. What do you think? He said, it's a state record fish. you got to call. So actually, I didn't have the number. and didn't know who to call. And uh, he had the number because in March or so, they caught one that was right at the state record. It was 58. Something. So he started making phone calls, and I called Aaron Priest, the guy that gave me the bait. He called a guy. Between the two of them, they got a biologist named Ryan Bosserman on the phone. Ryan said he was actually making his kids some dinner. He'd be here just as soon as he could. He was here, I'd say the fish was in the boat at 5.15. And he was here, I don't know, I, I want to say by seven. I mean, he was fast. But I couldn't believe how fast he actually got here, you know. And that's good for the fish. He showed up, and my mom and dad and several friends here, you know. And uh, we got the fish out of the tank and put it on the scale. And I looked at the scale and seen the 61 two, two and I just started smiling. You know, I, I couldn't believe it. Congratulations. I couldn't believe it. Uh -huh. 61 2. Oh! <laughs> you got it! Well, that was a, an issue that we had to face on the water because the boat's only got a 30 gallon live well in it. And uh, actually, after we decided to make the phone call, uh, Sean said, Now, what are you going to do with it? And I looked around and I looked at that tank and I said, It's got to go in there. So I actually grabbed the fish and turned it sideways and got it down inside the tank and rolled it. It actually worked out great because it couldn't really flop and hurt itself. And I kept the water running on it constantly. And kept the bilge pump on, which it's got an overflow on it too. The fish was perfect. It couldn't ask for it to be any healthier whenever we released it. Well, with the water being up and muddy, and it, you know a lot of current for this area, that's a lot of current. And there was a lot of debris floating down the other side of the river. And that'd just be in your lines, you wouldn't be able to fish. So we decided to fish the inside bank, or inside bend, which had mud, bank, and good wood structure. And honestly, wasn't targeting blue cats. But it was targeting flatheads. And I just didn't think that was what we was going to pull out of there. I just didn't. So after we got the fish certified and all the measurements and weights, and I had to sign some papers. And then we got the fish out and took our pictures and videos. And we put it, actually put it back in the live well with the pumps on it for a little bit. And then we done the release. And I think I pulled it back to me twice, maybe three right, times. And it spun. Uh, it seen blue cat, caught by Cody Carver. Yeah. Watch this baby swim away. <laughs> she jumped right off. Right off. Yes. 
Well, and it's a great thing that they're releasing a fish that big. I mean, if you want the money, you're going to have to release that fish. Uh, I mean, that that one fish is putting out millions of, you know, of eggs. And whenever a company that big is doing that, people tend to follow and really shouldn't be keeping the fish that are that big. Uh, if you want to keep a fish to eat, make it a small one. That, that's a trophy fish. You know, somebody tomorrow could catch that fish and say, I caught a state record fish too. Go ahead and get him back in the live well. So I'll get the you want up there. Oh, yeah. Live well. How long was it? Uh, 1,156 millimeters. I'm going to do the math on here in a second. Put it in the American. Yeah, thank you. That's going to be the base. There you go. Yeah, how you going to get in there? What y'all got up for a cow fast? I said, who's all crazy to go fishing? Yeah.